This is Space Invaders for the Atari 5200, invading from space. Or at least from the left side of the screen. I'm not sure where they come from. West, apparently. This game cartridge is copyright 1982 for the 5200, originally released in the arcades in 1978 by Taito. I remember this game when it was new because I had an Atari 2600 and loved Space Invaders. I still love Space Invaders to this day. A friend of mine had an Atari 5200 and I was blown away by the fact that the invaders were colorful. And there's more variety in these Space Invaders, or, or at least they look different than they do in the Atari 2600 version. Now, nearly three decades later, picking up this version of Space Invaders for the Atari 5200 once again, I'm not nearly as impressed with it as I am with the Atari 2600 version. Strike one, they removed invisible aliens. Never remove invisible aliens. You immediately end up on my shit list. <laughs> If it's one thing the Atari 2600 could always do, it was invisible graphics. They can't even get that right today. The Atari 2600 version had about 100 different variations of Space Invaders, so Strike 2 is the removal of the version with shields that move back and forth. Something so simple was so awesome, I can't believe they didn't put that version in here either. <laughs> 5200 Space Invaders only gives you 12 game variations. Isn't this supposed to be more powerful than the Atari 2600? And Strike 3 is the controller. Not a good game for the 5200 controller. But seriously, that just added a whole strategic element to Space Invaders when you only saw them when you hit them and they were invisible the rest of the time. Check out my review of Space Invaders for Atari 2600 to see the, to see the differences between the two games. Overall, this version of Space Invaders on the 5200 is a nice looking game and it would play well were it not for the horrible 5200 controller which really gets in the way of this game in particular more so than any other Atari 5200 game that I've played. Even Pac-Man, because in Pac-Man you don't need to use a fire button. Now moving left and right in this game is bad enough because you really want to make very short precise movements which are difficult with the 5200 analog non-self-centering joystick. But the big problem is that my fire button was stuck for about half the review. You can hold down the button and rapid fire the aliens if you're shooting the bottom row or you're firing up into your shield because you can fire once at a time. You cannot fire again once there's a shot on screen, so if you're shooting something close to you, it's like you can machine gun them. This becomes a problem when the fire button is stuck and you're trying to shoot the last alien invading because then you cannot line up a precise shot and uh, you're screwed. Although I did pull it off there. Normally I just make up my own story to Space Invaders, but the Atari 5200 instruction manual gives you one. It's actually not that exciting of a story, it's about the Earth Defense Corps and you're in a training simulator. Which is stupid, except for paragraph 3. Quickly you climb into a laser tank. A second enlistee follows you. You each settle into deep leather seats. With a soft whirring sound, the automatic hatch cover closes overhead. I'm glad that the Earth Defense Corps has sprung for the deep leather seats rather than the cheap cloth ones. That's important when defending the Earth. You want to be comfortable and fall asleep halfway through the battle. Here's where things get difficult. This level's tough. Previously, the invaders looked like butterflies or other things from demons to diamonds, but now they look like ghosts. 
Uh, to be fair, they don't clarify who's invading from space. They could be ghosts. Why not? They would be space ghosts. Ah. After every seven levels, I think your cannon is abducted and uh, clears off the damage to the shields, and then the uh, alien invaders are reset to a higher orbit once again. Space Invaders is a terrific game, and it's available on pretty much every game console and handheld device ever made, including the recent Space Invaders Extreme that I reviewed for the Xbox 360. I really like that version of the game. The arcade original is difficult to come by these days, and if you see one, you should make sure to play a few rounds of Space Invaders. The 5200 version is nice in some respects. It was definitely cooler back in 1982 or 1983 when it looked dramatically different to me, at least, as a kid. Nowadays, I prefer the Atari 2600 version. If you buy a lot of Atari 5200 games, you're likely to end up with Space Invaders anyway. It's a very popular game, and in many respects, it's a totally different version of the game than the 2600 game and arcade original. So it's worth checking out for you Atari 5200 collectors.